this stick one there. The egg, back section I'll be putting a catch piece in. And the top piece I've still got to carve. So I've got lots and lots of carving on that one. Whereas this one, I've got a very small notch on the side here. A very small section taken out of that. And a very small flat section at the bottom just to hold the trigger stick. And that's it. So when you actually cut, I, I took the top off this one just to make it settle on there a tiny bit better. But that's it. So this one's a very simple method to actually set up deadfalls and try with. So moving on to the live catch deadfall. It's all very well making sure that we actually do catch animals and kill them quite quickly as an ethical way of doing something. Um, sometimes you want to catch something live. So, I've got poached the pheasant here. Bird bones are notoriously hollow, very lightweight, everything else. And if they get caught in something like a dead bull, they do shatter most of their bones and everything else, which is an instant kill and everything else. But you, you don't want to be picking out lots and lots of little bone bits out of it or anything else. So something like a dead full cat, uh, live catch dead full. This was urbanly foraged around most cities. It's found in, it, it's wild. It's found in most canals, um, rivers, woodlands. It's amazing on how many of there are out there in the wild now. But you can make them up with um, some string as a tension cage. You literally take some string, tie it to two sticks, twist it in the middle, and start threading sticks through. You come up with a, a cage, basically, just made out of string. Work, would work the same way. So, you put your bait in here, comes in, hits it, comes down, you've got something live all of a sudden. To make it more effective, you could put a weight on the top of the cage, make it a bit heavier. So, it just literally comes down. This was a figure four that I set up to actually do this cage. Would work no different with any of the other trigger systems I've actually just shown you. So, procuring ground birds, something like one of the pheasants. One of the oldest ways to catch a pheasant is, uh, just check Curtis isn't in the group, no he's not, his next uh, gamekeeper, he hates me teaching this one, would be something called a pheasant line. And what this is, I've got one set up down the front, I've got a peg in the ground, attached to that peg is a very fine wire or string. If I follow that string down, I start to fill up raisins. What happens is, the pheasant comes along, finds the first raisin, and eats it. Swallows it down, it takes the string in. Oh look, another raisin's come to my mouth, I'll quite happily eat that. And it will do that all the way down the line. And what happens is, it eats the raisins, they go down, they go around the gut, the string goes with them, they actually get stuck there. And what happens is, when it gets to the end, you end up with a pheasant stuck to a piece of string, tied to a tree, tied to a post, whatever you are. So what you do is you walk up, sit the pheasant, dispatch it as quickly as possible. Now we've got lunch. It's that simple. Yes, with fruity stuffing, exactly. There is another way we can actually catch these. I've got Paul coming up shortly with a uh, birch bark comb. And what you do is you put the comb into the ground. You put a bit of bird seed around it. These guys have actually got guard feathers around the back. They come down, they eat the bird seed. The cone gets stuck on their head. When they stand back up, they've now got a cone on their head and they are in the dark. Oh look, it's dark, it must be sleeping time. So they just sit down and go to sleep. <laughs> it works with small game birds as well, quail and bits and pieces. They are that stupid. But because it's dark, they will sit there. And if you won't ever try it, and you walk into a wood and you find a pheasant sat like that with a cone on its head. <laughs> it's quite comical to the first time you see it, but it, it, does, it honestly does work. You can literally walk up, pick them up, again dispatch, you've got lunch again. So there are certain ways you can catch them and they do work. Not all of them will kill the animal outright. Do they not suckle with the raisins? I, I honestly don't know because the string is so fine it comes down and just holds them. I try I teach ethical tracking 
that one would, is illegal to use in the UK. I make no bones about that. If you ever read Danny, the champion of the world. Yes, that's where we recognised it from. That's in there. It's an old poacher's trick. And as anything, as a legal responsibility, you have a legal responsibility if you are trapping to a human, humane dispatch or actually end the suffering in any quick way you can. And I teach that on any time I do a course or anything else. We've got, we're not out here to cause pain and suffering for anyone. I'm going to turn around, move on to something a tiny bit more gruesome because I, I don't like this, but I do try, I do teach people about it because of the historic importance. Um, it's called the hair pipe, and the hair pipe used to be for catching hairs in the UK. It was legal, and it's a type of snare. And what this is is there's a piece of elder. It's been hollowed out. It's got the noose going through it. One end of the string is actually tied to the piece of elder. The other one is tied to a post in the ground. A hare, sorry, trap. A hare or a rabbit would run down the line, get this trapped around their neck, and take this off of the pegs. This then comes sliding up and goes into them. I don't like this because this causes pain and suffering. I don't see the point in it. But this was in most of the medieval traps and medieval times. And because it goes in, it causes suffering, they pull tighter, or they actually stop because then they realise it's not as painful. So they stand, they stay there. I don't think this is a very nice way of doing it, and I'm glad this one is not allowed. But it's one that I do teach for historical importance because it's one of those ones that people do need to know about from past times. And what you'd find is those two spikes there would be quite sharp. I've obviously blunted mine for training purposes and I'm not that silly. But even with those like that, when I put it on myself to see how bad it was, yeah, it's uncomfortable when you actually do it. So it would be normally set up on two small V's literally holding the shuttle on the top like that and that is what that is it's basically a shuttle that will go up and down and that's how you'd set it up and it's how it would be used now I got this one the other day thankfully to somebody over there thank you Mark um, it's a gin trap um, they are illegal these are very old um, these are a leg hold style trap and these would have been placed all over woodland many, many times over. Just carefully picking up a stick because I'm not stupid enough to put my fingers in this one. Um, so these would be placed on a path or a walkway. Animal comes walking along, hits the centre trigger plate and the jaws come up either side. Um, some parts of the world they're still used, they're still got different times of fire using different shapes of them. Um, we're no longer allowed to use anything like this in the UK, but for teaching purposes it's useful to know what was allowed in certain times and what can be still out there for different countries with different laws. So something like that is one that can be used in certain areas. One that I'd look for, for a leg hold, would be one similar to this one. I've got one toggle with one string on this one. This one would have two strings on this toggle. The green piece being the snare, the orange piece going up to the tree. Comes down, the toggle is held in place by two sticks on two, two branches. Very similar to that shape, a peg. The top one is holding the top piece, the bottom one is holding just the, literally the tip of that toggle. I've got a snare going across the path and it's got a load of sticks going up it. And the reason we've done this 
is so when the sticks are stepped on, this goes up, goes around the animal's foot. You've now got an animal attached to a tree. It's a, it's a leg hold. It's not going to kill the animal. It's not going to injure it as such. But you've now got an animal attached to a tree. That's all very well, but if anyone's ever seen a wild boar, they're not exactly the most friendliest thing going. And probably when you've annoyed it to actually get it stuck to a tree by a leg, leg hold snare or a trap, not necessarily the nicest thing to actually go up and deal with. So sometimes you may have to dispatch something from a distance or actually not endanger yourself to be able to do it. These ones, again, need an engine. So you'd be having a branch, a sapling, something like that to actually work it. And it works a very simple system on actually catching something and actually holding something for its life. I'll go over to the uh, Jibwa bird trap. Now, sorry trap. I need a bait for this one. So I've now got a dead rabbit. Birds, and this is catch the chicken. I haven't got anything else, but it'll work for this demonstration. His feet don't really hold on to the perch either, so you have to bear with me for this one. Birds are notoriously suspicious animals, apart from pheasants who are just really dumb. And they just do what they want, but... Birds will generally not land on the ground. They will quite happily land on a perch above something to actually look down on something to decide whether it's safe rather than landing on straight down there. If you've got something set up like this, this would be a snare, literally over a perch. So I've got a perch up here, I've got a snare. A bird, when it comes into land, opens its claws like this. It goes onto the post. Its back claw goes around the back and its front go around uh, front ones go around the front and it goes like that to actually hold on to something. That is how a bird lands on any perch, no matter what bird it is. When you see the bird come in, it would grab hold of this. I've got to put this over his because he hasn't got any back feet to actually cover this one. So he goes like this, he lands on the perch. When he does, perch falls away. The snare goes tight because I've got a counterweight in there and now he's stuck. Sorry dogs. He's not happy being in there, but at least you've got a bird now stuck to a pole. Quite regularly you'd have seen most Native Americans walking with sticks, like these sort of posts. They had holes drilled in the top for this purpose of having actually a perch trap that they could actually take with them. They could put set this up to a side, sit down under the shade, and that's passively act like trying to catch food for you. The same as most traps are, they are indiscriminate, but they are a passive way of collecting calories. When you set them up, you've done the time setting them up, you've got the time doing them. When you leave them, they are passive. You are not there physically doing something to actually make them have the, or make them catch something. They will do it when their time is right for actually going through and doing it. So, something as simple as this. And the way this works, I've got a counterbalance in there small club hammer at the moment that I use to bang in everything but it works. I've got a small knot on this string. The knot is literally halfway through my thumb right now. The hole through the edge and a peg. What I do is where the hole where that knot is as it comes down I get the peg where it binds with the peg I push it in. So what happens is, this is where everyone's watching, it won't stay there. It stays there by the friction of the knot. I did this the other day and all of a sudden it fell through and I still had it looped over my thumb and my thumb went sideways. It was, not, it was quite comical for everyone watching, but not so much for me. But, and it is the friction of the knot trying to pull through the, the actual hole keeping that post there so it's a very simple break off mechanism that it's not even in there about that big if that so that is the whole system and it's probably the most easiest system going you can use these even this style of peg here on a deadfall you have a small peg on the ground 
This would be your bait stick, and that would then be holding up a deadfall weight by string. So it can be utilized in so many different ways. Head towards the last two of my traps now. I've got my Harvey scissor trap over here. Now, the front of this system here, the trigger system, would be exactly the same for the scissor deadfall at the back. However, the scissor deadfall at the back, the bottom bar hasn't been attached to the uh, bottom plate, so I can't really use it at the moment because it keeps lifting up and won't set properly. So I've got to go fix that one first. That's my work in progress, not everything works straight away. So, a Mojave scissor trap. These were found all over the Mojave Desert in bundles. The Native Americans used to make them, two sticks attached to a toggle by a load of line that they'd made, and they were found in bundles all over. And that's all they had was these two sticks and the toggle attached to the string. To set them up, they'd have found a small engine, a withy or something. They've got two small bent over withies pushed into the ground, and a bait stick and everything at the back. This would be camouflaged at the front and it would be encased in the back to stop anything going in and trying to eat it. So you've only got a way in coming in here to actually get the food. When the animal comes in to get the food, which would be on a bait stick here, the bait stick is triggered because the animal is eating it and this now pulls up and does two things. Because it's a scissor trap, it's squeezing together like a nutcracker. So it's going around the neck, it's going around the head, doing a very humane dispatch at the top. It's also being pulled upwards. So it's now being pulled up, not only being squished, but being pulled up on the sides here. So this is a very effective, very simple way of catching small ground prey and everything else. In America, they've got a lot more things like groundhogs, prairie dogs, you know, um, marmots and other bits and pieces. So they've got a lot more down, uh, ground game than we have. The way these are done, the top of the sticks are actually got a small cutout on them. One side has a loop, the other side is tied to the string. And it basically makes a V. When this gets pulled up, it just pulls them together and adds like that. So when you've actually got this set up, these are a very effective, very simple way to catch it. Now with that same trigger system, you'd have this one over here tied up. And the way this one would work, similar system, animal can only come in one way. You'd have all this side fenced off so it can only go through one way. You'd have your trigger system on the other side. And this would be lifted up to about here. Because it's a scissor, when it actually goes off, the animal's through here. It would come down and do an exact crush on the, on the animal itself. These in America have been made and scaled up in size to actually catch brown bear and black bear. They are using a tree, basically, as the top bar. When you are actually catching something of that size, and it was used to actually feed tribes of people and bits and pieces, not just for killing something. They were actually out eating it, trapping it properly, everything else everything would have been used but when you realize something like this can be scaled up to actually catch something as a big as a brown or a black bear it's actually quite impressive to actually know that that a trap that can go from quite small to catch a mouse to catching something as big as a brown bear or a black bear is the same basically the same trap is quite phenomenal so with this one being said on the last one, I'd like to say thank you very much for standing here listening to me explain what we're go doing and everything else. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.